This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be in Cary this Thursday at the Shrine Cafeteria from 4 to 7 p.m. Again, Shrine Cafeteria, 4 to 7 p.m. in Cary, Ohio. If you want any more information about the Mad Canadian and where him and his food truck will be, Check out his social medias on Facebook and Twitter. Just search Mad Canadian BBQ or TMC BBQ, and you'll find him and all of his delicious updates. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a Ohio-based, roast-to-order, micro-roaster, uh, veteran-owned, I tried to do it without looking and I failed. Uh, roast to order. I think I said that one already. World class, fair trade certified, USDA organic coffee company. Integrity is at the core of what they do. And what else would you expect from a Marine? Um, you get free shipping over $50. You get um, some of the more popular items are available in K cups. Um, you can save money with a subscribe and save service. You also make sure you never run out. And, you know, we're, it's 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 almost the end of September. We're, we're we're getting close to that thinking about the holidays sort of stuff. So uh, gift cards also available. So with all of that, uh, I just want to tell you to make sure to check out IronBeanCoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? What's going there? I gotcha. I beat yeah. you to it. Hope everyone's having a good week, getting ready for the fourth Ohio State football game of the year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or, or maybe their first. <laughs> uh, you what know what? What are you what? drinking tonight, Jared? What am I drinking? Uh, what are you drinking tonight? Watershed bourbon. Ah, uh, well, I got some Woodford bourbon right here. Ah. So before we get too much into our bourbon, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start the episode. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? I'm not going to complain. That's that, yeah, that's it. Let's. Let's talk some football. Let's get right into it. We always run long on our uh, Know Your Enemy episodes, which is what this is. So let, let's just uh, let's just go. All right, cool. Um, first bit of news here. Um, there it is. <laughs> uh, Henderson. Trevion Henderson, a sponsored by Arby's. Arby's. Just Arby's. Or Arby's Arby. Arby's Arby. The beef and cheddar. Yes. I let's see now. He also got a sponsorship deal from a local, um, from a local car dealership. And same one from when you were. Yes, I'm gonna choose not to say their name, because uh, <laughs> I'm not playing the. I'm not. I'm not doing. I'm not doing the thing. Anyway, now. What he got for that sponsorship, for as far as I can tell, was a brand new Chevy Camaro RS. I'm just hoping that the Arby's deal was worth more than a beef and cheddar. That's all I'm saying. I hope it was worth more than a beef and cheddar. It was. Okay. It's probably worth about, it's probably worth about 200 of them, 250 of them, something like that. I have no idea what a beef and cheddar costs, Kyle. <laughs> I don't either. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea what to do with that information. Other bit of news, linebacker Dallas Gant entering the transfer portal. It, th this one's interesting because he's been so patient ever since he got to Ohio State. Just very patient to wait his turn, wait his turn. And when it's finally his turn, the younger, the younger classmen seem to go above him there. I've, I've said it before. I'll say it again. 
I'm all for the transfer portal because quite frankly, I, I, I don't, uh, I'm sorry if this is rude. I don't want guys who wait their turn. I want guys who steal starting roles. Did, are, are we all going to sit around and be like, Kyle, can you believe Henderson didn't wait his turn? Why? Why did Henderson run for almost 300 yards last week? He should have been patiently waiting his turn. Nah. I want dogs. I want guys who will go out there and steal starting roles. I don't want guys who wait around for starting spots. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> all right. All right. That's, Stuart that's says all, that's no, and I don't feel bad about it. All right. That's all the news here. So, Jared, it is time to get to know your enemy. The Akron Zips. Kyle, I got good news and I got bad news for you. Good news is we get to watch, watch some Mac schools. That No, that was the bad news. <laughs> You successfully okay. predicted the bad news. I was going to say good news. Uh, I, I I personally don't care. A lot of Ohio State fans are upset by the latest trend, but I'm not. But whatever. So for for a lot of you, good news. Finally getting that primetime game. The bad news, however. And Kyle stole my thunder on this one. It's it's against the Akron Zips. All right. Yep. A- Akron coming in one and two. Um, Probably notably their first game getting blown out by Auburn. So I just want to set the record straight right now. Ohio State does not have to meet or surpass what Auburn does to match how good or not good they are. Transitive property is not a thing. Yes. So who are the Akron Zips, Jared? They're, they're the Akron Zips. What do, what do you want to say? Um, it's... This is, and I'm just going to say this because I know a lot of people are like, oh, but Tulsa's terrible, you guys. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, but Minnesota's not all that good, you guys. People, I'm telling you right now. Yep. Akron is, and it's not even close. It's, it's not, no one else is in the ballpark. Akron is the easiest game on Ohio State's schedule. Period. Mm-hmm. Exclamation point. In Terrabang, I, I don't care. Well, no, not in Terrabang, because that would question. It's not a question. It's a it's a statement. It's a fact. Uh, Akron's not a good football team. Uh, Vegas yep. put Ohio State as a 49 and a half point favorite for a reason. And for those of you playing at home, that is twice, two times what the spread was against Tulsa. If that is any indication for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so who are the Akron Zips? Uh, I, I, well, I just are... answered that question. <laughs> well, let's get to know some of the players for Akron here. Uh, notably, their, their starting quarterback, uh, Cato Nelson, is still out. Uh, he has still has a foot injury from, I believe, the Auburn game. So in comes sophomore DJ Irons who's been playing since the Auburn game and is actually actually looked pretty decent. If you look at the, the number wise here, he's, he's a very accurate passer, 76% passing five touchdowns, one interception, not turning the ball over that much. He also has the most carries and rushing touchdowns for the team. So, so this sounds like Jared, that this is the offense. Correct. For Akron. Yes, his, his name, name is DJ is Irons. Irons. Yes. Yes. Uh, some other names. So some other names just to get to know as well. Yeah, no, Buckeye uh, Esquire, you're correct. That's it, It's an elite name. We don't have to pretend mm-hmm. otherwise. I just can't decide if he's like a nightclub DJ or owns a CrossFit gym. Yeah. Uh, Akron actually has a couple of p- pair of uh, freshman players on this offense to keep an eye out. Uh, Lenzel Norris is their starting um, running back. Um, hasn't had all that great success so far. Uh, true, true freshman running back. And the other one to keep an eye out, to keep an eye on is uh, Kanata Mumfield, another true freshman um, from Georgia. 
Mm-hmm. He, I believe he leads the team. Nope. He's, he's second on the team with um, receptions and yards and first with um, in reception touchdowns. Stewart asks, how hard do you have to reach to make this game seem relevant? I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. This game's not, this game's not relevant. Um, no, it's, it's, it's not. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. We are going to introduce you to some of the better players on the Akron Zips team. And the fact that mm-hmm. Kyle immediately went to a pair of true freshmen probably isn't a great sign because, you know, Akron's probably not getting the cream of the crop from a, from a recruiting standpoint. And with the transfer portal being what the transfer portal is and with NIL being what NIL is, I think we're really looking at scenarios in college football in which if these guys have great freshman years at Akron, that that they're gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you want to look on the defensive side, look no further than their pair of um, running backs, uh, Bubba and apologize if I'm butchering this, but just Lord. Uh, Bubba and just Lord. They're two leading tacklers for the team to uh, linebackers, linebackers. If that's not running backs, apologize. Linebackers uh, leading the team in tackles, uh, active all over the field there. But other than that, Jared, I didn't really see much else in terms of the leaders for, for Akron's defense here. I mean, they, they are averaging almost 40 points a game that they're lighting up. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not that great of a team, and I think a lot of it just because of the first game against Auburn, letting up sixty points definitely definitely doesn't help there. But, but yeah, anything else you want to mention about Akron here, or uh, probably want to point out that their one win is against a school named Bryant. Have you ever heard of Bryant before? I have not. Take a wild guess what their mascot is and don't look. Look look in the camera. Look in the camera. You have to guess. What's their mascot? What's the Bryant University mascot? The Bryant they University. Sound like they sound like a bulldog. Did, did, did you cheat? No, I honestly did not cheat. Is it a bulldog? The Bryant University bulldogs. Mm. Either bulldogs or tigers. Wildcats is always a good guess. Or wildcat. Um, One of those three. Yeah, we had uh, we also had a, a couple guesses down in the Discord there, Cardinals and Bears, which are also a, a always good guess. Yep. All right, Jared. Uh, let's let's go ahead and um, you want to get into some of our stat lines here of of this of this matchup here. What 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 stat lines are are, are left? I, I think. Honestly, Kyle, I feel like you've talked Akron to death. I feel like no, we've done no, our I'm, job. I meant, I meant our, 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 our spiel of like who to watch out for, key matchups, the spread. Oh. And who we pick. So moving into our prediction section of, of the show. Do you want to do yes. that first? Or it looks like Austin and and a, uh, we have Austin's over-unders from our buddy Austin oh. Graham. I think we should Let's jump do that. Let me, that first. Let me scroll down here. Uh, throws by quarterback that aren't Stroud. And he has that 12 and a half. I think with Stroud's shoulder sore. Um, but just CJ Stroud's shoulder for a second. I talked about this a lot in our sleep cast or excuse me, our sleep cats only episode that's uh, behind the Patreon paywall. I think the fans are making a bigger deal about the shoulder than I think anyone at Ohio state is because most of the time when anyone at Ohio state talks about it, they talk about it being sore, not hurt, not injured. Um, So I think a lot of people are using that as some sort of excuse to bench him because they want to bench him. And it's, I don't know. I'm not saying it isn't based in reality. That's not what I'm saying because I don't know either. I don't know the condition of his shoulder, and quite frankly, no one outside the WAC at least seems to be giving up that information uh, that they know what's exact. So if it's just sore, well, then he has to just sort of get over it. That's big boy football. No one's completely healthy right now. If there's an injury, however, then he should probably sit 
fairly early into this game because it's it, it shouldn't be a, a a game in which you would need your starting quarterback too long. But I also want to say I don't buy into this idea that, well, since he has a sore shoulder, they should just let him rest. No, 100 percent not. This is a young man struggling with his confidence. And I think uh, a, a half a football against the Akron Zips can go a long way, a long way to improving said confidence. Mm-hmm. But do you think there will be more than 12 passes by quarterbacks that are not named Stroud? Yeah, because I think that they go up big. I think they go up big fairly early. And then once Stroud goes out there, he looks good for a little while. and. All he's really got to do is throw some deep balls to the three starting wide receivers. That's really all he's ha- really has to accomplish. Um, all right, moving on, uh, moving on here, Jared. <laughs> team rushing. Yards. I was talking. That's fine. Uh, over, team, right. over, team, over, over, over. Yeah. All right, team rushing yards, 265. Over. I'm going to go over. Over. Hmm? over. Akron team yard, Akron team yardage uh, yards. Team yards at 283. I'm going to go over. Kyle, well. you completely lost me. What the hell were you saying? I, I, ju- I know I jumped around. Okay. Akron team yardage at 283. Uh, probably over, which I don't feel. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, he was telling me to shut up. That's exactly what was happening. Um, I. I, he's between the defense not looking great and the linebackers not looking great and the safety is not looking great. I think the defensive line will get some pressure this week. I think that's the thing that will happen. But as far as I, there, there'll be a lot of junk time at the end where I think they could probably rack up some cheap yards. So I'm going to go over. Yep. Uh, Jeremy Ruckert catches year of the tight end. Jeremy having more than two catches. I'll go uh, over two and a half. I'll, go, I'll go over, even though I don't think it's happened yet this year. I think two's the max. I think he did last week. I think he had three. Oh, did he? I thought he only had two. I I could be wrong. I think he had two, two or I don't know. It's Either fine. Way, moving on. Moving forward. Ohio State. Moving. Ohio State team sacks at three and a half. Buckeye Zach, year of the tight ends, always the lie. That's the joke. <laughs> Three and a half, Jared, is team sacks for this game. I think the the defensive line group at Ohio State has been having a lot of shit talking thrown their way by the fans and probably at this point by the coaches. Um, maybe there's some motivation. Maybe, again, late in the game, Akron's probably going to be trying to throw the ball. You'll probably get some of those young dudes in there, you know, your JTTs and your Jack Sawyers and so on and so forth. I think they'll feast. I think they'll pick up a couple. I'll I'll take the over on three and a half, even though, once again, I don't think that's a total Ohio State has achieved yet this year. I I think so, too. You got a mobile quarterback who's going to try to run around. And I want to believe our defensive ends are quick enough to be able to get a shoelace tackle on him. So I'll I'll go with the over. The case against the sacks here is that the, the Irons is very willing to run and therefore might not spend much time in the pocket. It might just sort of be a one read and run sort of situation. Maybe, maybe. All right. Uh, Ohio State passing touchdowns at three and a half. I'm going to go over. Over. I'm going to go over on that. Over. Easy over. And Trey Hundo. Trey Hundo. That's his name. Three and a half catches. His name's not Trey Hundo. I refuse to give a second running back that name. Uh, catches at three and a half. I'll go under. Yeah, under. He'll 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 run the ball. He'll run, run, run. All right, Jared. Uh, I think this is a good time for us to do an ad break here, and we'll go ahead and uh, finish up with our projections and answering the rest of our sloop cast questions. Cool, cool. You going first, or am I going first? Here, I'll go first. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, proud, um, proud to have them as a sponsor, a great guy, even, even better food and, and spices that he has. Um, current, currently he's working on just working on a few things behind the scenes to try to get the spices up and running again. So 
Appreciate you guys' patience while he gets that all together. More information coming out soon. Um, in the meantime, check out his um, his barbecue truck. He's in the Northwest Ohio area, mainly in the Finley uh, Tiffin area. So be sure to check out his food truck and any other news from the Mad Canadian over his uh, social media sites, Facebook, Twitter. Find out more information about where him and his food truck are going to. Again, this Thursday, he'll be at the Shrine Cafeteria from 4 to 7 p.m. in Cary, Ohio. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, there's a section of the Iron Bean Coffee Company website I've not really ever talked about before. Sometimes the stuff's in stock and sometimes it's not because they, they're exotics. They're limited coffees. So I don't talk about them a lot because they're not always there. Um, nope, not those Nomad. I'm talking about the exotic section. There's the Tanzanian pea berry. Uh, there's the monsoon Malabar, the Guatemalan Antigua. I, I, I think I'm saying that right. And the. I'm not going to try that one. There's a fourth one. It also sounds good. Uh, Kyle, which one of the three I named would you like to hear more about? The Tanzanian Peaberry, the Moon-Sided Malabar, or the Guatemalan Antigua? The yeah, Guatemalan Antigua. Guatemalan Antigua. Let's see. Uh, this is a wet processed coffee. It has the flavor notes of honey, apple, tea, and uh, uh, floral brown sugar. Uh, it's a medium roast coffee. Uh, it's 100% sun-dried. Um, it's a single origin coffee uh, from the Antigua region. Again, I hope I'm saying that correctly. I think I am. Um, which is a sanctioned world heritage site. I, I don't understand what a lot of this means, but it sounds fancy as hell. Um, famous for its high quality coffee, Antigua is uh, naturally blessed with diverse terrain in the highlands of Guatemala. Bottom line here, guy, guys, is that Iron Bean, the folks over at Iron Bean Coffee, go to all lengths and efforts to bring you the best quality coffee beans. That that's the takeaway here. They're, they're not they're not just sticking a bunch of stuff in a can that you stick in the freezer later on. There's research, there's relationships. And again, this is all coming, this is a single origin, which means it's coming from the same farm integrity taking place here and again just like all the other coffees it's fair trade certified and usda organic doing things the right way to benefit both the farmers that the beans are coming from and you the customer because that's how the iron bean coffee company does it you can find those coffees and a bunch more coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com that is iron bean coffee america's local coffee brewer all right jared uh let's get into our projections here so who is our guest speaker or guest speaker, our guest picker this week? In the Discord, we call him Cousin Jay. So we will be calling him Cousin Jay here in uh, this episode. All right, Cousin Jay. All right, so first projection here. Ohio State player to watch. Jared, who is the player to watch for this Ohio State team this weekend? CJ Stroud, I, I think. He has a lot of pressure on him. He has a lot of expectation on him. The talk has been around his shoulder. People are calling for other quarterbacks because, you know, the most popular guy in town is the backup quarterback and all of that stuff. Um, I, I think it's time for CJ Stroud to really go out there and show what he can do. And quite frankly, if he struggles, if he doesn't come out confident and throwing the ball across the yard against Akron, then maybe there is cause for concern. Um, mm -hmm. But I think this is the game in which like, there's no, there's no excuses or anything behind it. He has to go out there and perform. Yep. It's also a young quarterback's first game under the lights. Yeah. I'm going to cheat Jared just because I will. I'm going to say the linebackers. I'm so going to say the cheating. linebackers here. That's cheating. 
Oh, that's right. They did right. play under the lights in, in, against Minnesota. My bad. I was trying to be dramatic. Gosh darn it. At home under the lights. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go with the linebackers the because, because they're I the meant. ones that's going to have to they're, they're the ones that's going to have to plug at the holes and try to chase down a DJ with him and his um, trying to run around there. So I, I truly think that um, the group that you need to watch this weekend is the linebacking crew. Um, especially, especially now, especially with uh, the a, the departure of Dallas Gantz now. Right, let's, we'll see. Let's well, maybe not. maybe we'll see a lot more. Maybe we'll see a lot more uh, Cody Simon. Maybe we'll see a lot more. Kyle, of, um, with all due respect to Dallas field. Gantz, he wasn't seeing the field. This does not affect the on-field products this weekend. And maybe we'll see more of um, Pallier as well too. We'll yeah, I'll, I would like we'll to see, see some more uh, Neote Ote. Um, I really just want to see a lot of Cody Simon. I would kind of like to just see Cody Simon never leave the field personally. All right, Jared. Uh, enemy player to watch. I have DJ yeah. Irons. It's the obvious call here. He's the leading passer on the team. He's the leading rusher on the team, both in yards and attempts. The entire offense goes through him. It's the it's the Defense that we're most worried about here because I, I think people's concerns over CJ Stroud are overblown. Um, but there is real actual cause for concern on the defense um, that, that shouldn't be minimized. And you you have to prove yourself against Akron because the talent gap is so huge. And if you mm-hmm. want to perform, if you want to show out as a defensive unit, this is your game to do it. And DJ Irons is the guy you got to stop. I'm going to go with the shiny freshman of Konata Mumfield. Uh, very talented wide receiver that DJ is going to try to get the, the ball out to get some of those crossing um, routes to uh, Konata. So I'm going to I'm going to go with the shiny freshman wide receiver for player to watch for Akron. Uh, key matchup, <laughs> Kyle, you you kind of you kind of touched on this one already um, because you you picked the linebackers which like the whole reason I added the key matchup thing, Kyle, into the into the episode was because sometimes we cheat. and We do grouping matchups under the player to watch. I'm like, okay, that's obviously a thing we want to talk about. So let me just create a new thing for it. And yet you still did it. You cheating bastard. So what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Complain. Call you out in front of everyone. That's what I'm going to do about it. Uh, but yeah, I do agree with your take, uh, as my key matchup is also Ohio State's linebackers versus DJ Irons. Yeah, that, I, I really think that is the key matchup, no matter what else I'm going to say here, but that is the key matchup here. So, you know, I'll go, I'll go ahead and give a sloop cat a, a mention in here. So let's, let us do, um, the Akron defensive backs versus Olave. Lave not having any any catches last week here. How, how will he respond here and trying to get open and get a reception, get a touchdown here? So um, that was that was mentioned by Buckeye Zach in our in our chat here. So I'll I'll go ahead and go with what Buckeye Zach said. Spread pick Kyle Ohio State favored by forty nine and a half points. Our guest picker again going by the name Cousin Jay um, has picked. Akron, not to win, not to win. He picks Ohio State to win. Uh, there's like basically zero chance in hell Ohio State loses this game. I'll say it. Some 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 people probably cringed or shuddered when I said that. Like, no, you're not allowed to say it. Ohio State's not going to lose this game. It doesn't mean they're going to look good. Uh, although they probably will. Although good is a sliding scale based off of expectations and blah blah blah. But 49 and a half points is a lot. Cousin Jay says, I think this is a breakout week for the offense against Akron, but goodness gracious, 49 and a half is a shallowed. Kyle, is is that is that a Northwest Ohio word or should I just mm-hmm. assume he meant to say shitload? Is this, is this is this how they say in Northwest Ohio? Is this how they censor themselves when they want to say shitload and they say shallowed? No, Kyle's giving me nothing on this one uh, to points to give. 
I will happily be wrong on this because it means they actually uh, took them to the woodshed. But I'll take Ohio State to scene rule the zips, but not to cover. Um, then he gives his final score prediction, which we'll, we'll, we'll come back to later. Uh, I agree. Uh, 49 and a half is just too much, especially with all the question marks Ohio State has right now. Ohio State wins this game comfortably, but Akron's probably going to score some junk points at the end. Uh, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not 49 and a half is too much. 49 and a half is too much. I'm picking Akron. Yeah, it's, it, it started off at 54 and a half. It was like 54 or 53 and a half. So maybe bump that down by just that many that you brought down. And maybe I would entertain of picking Ohio State to cover, but no, 49 and a half is too much for me. So I will pick Akron to cover, but Ohio State to win easily. So with that being said, Kyle, we've all three picked Ohio State to win. We've all said that. So there's no suspense there. Final score predictions. Um, Kyle, we're all in the same ballpark, but none of us picked exactly the same. Um, my final score prediction is 52 to 17. Uh, Cousin Jay picks 59 to 14. What say you? I say 55 to 14. So Let's I'll, be, I'll be in between you guys there. There you go. Um, Nomad says, uh, in our live chat, which, uh, you YouTube folks can see happening down there. Um, we have Nomad 48 to 10. Stuart, are you serious? 37 to 35? No way. No, he's, he likes to kick the hornet's nest, as he says. I think that's all he's doing. So Nomad has 48 to 10. We have Buckeye Esquire 59 17. Buckeye Zach 41 to 28. That would be Man, if it's that kind of score. That would be disappointing. If it, if it's if it's four it's if it's if it's 41 to 28, that's disappointing. That's that's us having an unhappy episode on Monday. That that's that's an unhappy standard and grade on Monday. And Stewart. I'm going to guess this is his legit one. He has 42 to 30. That's still a very mm-hmm. upset Monday episode. If it's if it's 40, I think, I think, 30, I think we'll say I think we'll say the same Monday. thing. Like I think we'll say the same thing like we did with the um with last weekend's game. If Akron scores more than 20 points, that's a disappointment. Yeah. No. 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 If yes, if if Ohio State allows Akron, and I'm not saying if Akron scores, I'm saying if Ohio State allows Akron to score 20 or more points. That is a failure. That is a failure. I said it last week about Tulsa, and I'll double say it now because this is a really, really mm-hmm. bad Akron team. Um, All right, Jared, let, let, let's go ahead and answer some more questions here. Okay, we have some more over unders. Now, these uh, jumping on the Austin bandwagon, we have Buckeye Zach with some more over unders. So let's hit those up. Okay, uh, let's see. Buckeye Zach here. Uh, yards Trey Henderson rushes against Akron at 325 under. Yeah, that's just, it's under. It, while it's entirely possible, it's just it's too much to actually put any money on. We're, we're gonna get we're gonna get a just a hefty rotation of running backs. So no, no, no. Uh, tight end touchdowns just, just by Akron quick, at one sorry, and a half. Sorry, Kyle, one quick more one additional quick note on that. He's a freshman. Don't don't kill him with carries. He's a freshman. Don't kill him with carries. You you saw what happened when Ohio State tried to put a college football load on Maurice Claret during his freshman year, and his shoulders started to give out. You you, you can't be throwing too much at Henderson right now. Yep. Tight end touchdowns versus Akron at one and a half. So we have one or more touchdowns for Ohio State. For high state's tight ends, was that yep. the? I'll go under. Tight end touchdowns versus Akron. I'll go under. Yeah, under maybe one. Yeah, I don't see more than. I mean, it could be, but just the current trend doesn't suggest that that's the case. Akron rushing yards versus Buckeye versus the Buckeye defense at two hundred. Oh, I'm it go better under. be lower. I'm going to go under. I think the Buckeyes' um, rushing defense has definitely improved a lot. It's just a matter of getting that 
pass rush now to help out the secondary. Yeah, I mean, they shut down Tulsa's running game and therefore they should be able to shut down Akron's running game. Um, now, that, I mean, now that rushing yards could could come from the quarterback as well. So absolutely. Um, but just just to throw this out there, DJ Irons, these are on the season. This is through three games through three games. DJ yeah, Iron, 165 Williams Jr. 149. Uh, Norlis 114. I mean, they have under 400 through three games. They better not get. They better not get 200 in one game. Yeah, they're they're averaging 129 yards per game. So yeah, better not. All right. Uh, let's see. Snaps played by JT Tuimulau at 25. Over, over on that. He's I'm going gonna, to start seeing the ball more and more. I, I think he will. I don't know if we see it happen this game. But I, again, he's a freshman. Maybe they're trying to bring him in slowly. Um, also, if Ohio State's defense is doing its job, Akron won't actually have that many snaps comparatively. Um, so I'm going to go under. All right. Um, I'm going to do just this last question here. I'm going to get to every um, try to get to other people's questions here. Okay. How many times Jared okay. mispronounced mispronounced during Wednesday's recording at 15 and a half? Uh, uh under. I, I'm not that bad. I'm not not good at, at pronouncing names. There was a couple of these Akron guys whose names I don't know. I probably missed a couple, but uh, under 15. Under 15. All right. Uh, let's see here. Stewart asks, over under me calling for McCord over Stroud at a thousand. Stop it. You're I'm I'm tired of your hornet net hornet nest kicking. I'm gonna start calling you horny for the nest. All right. Uh let's see here. Uh Kabuto asks, did Trevion Henderson's Tulsa performance earn him a piece of the Trey Hundo nickname? Or does he need to have a true 300 yard game first? No, it's it's that that nickname is already taken. We can we can find a new nickname for Henderson. Trey Hundo is already taken. All right, let's see here. Uh, Buckeye Esquire does does the Gantt transfer signify that they're cutting down the defensive rotation and he was on the outside looking in? No, because he was already in that place. Before they started cutting down the ring, he didn't. Yeah, I think he only had like what two or three snaps against like last weekend. Yeah. So if he, if he was going to see the ball more, he would have seen it last weekend there. Sometimes you get recruited over. Sometimes you get passed over. Sucks. Big boy football though. Yep. Uh, looking to see if there's any other questions that we want to answer here, Jared. Uh, let's see. But, uh, Buckeye Esquire asked a similar question uh, about Grant's transfer. Uh, is it indicative of dissatisfaction in the locker room? And if that disfati- dissatisfaction is from older guys getting beat out by younger, more talented guys, is that a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Those guys aren't going to play. From their perspective, they should go someplace where they can play. Their window for playing football like your window for playing football and you can play basketball at the rec league for years and years and years and years, but your opportunity to actually put on pads and play actual football. His is closing. He mm-hmm. should go someplace and play football. And from Ohio state's perspective, they're going to get that scholarship back and it's going to open up uh, opportunities for younger guys. It's that's why I'm so pro transfer portal. It benefits both parties. Yep. At least from Ohio State's perspective, it does. All right, Jared. Maybe, maybe uh, the smaller schools whose better players leave and go elsewhere don't feel that way. All right, Jared. All right. I think that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's uh, episode here. Again, this game, Ohio State and Akron will be on Big Ten Network at 7.30 p.m. Again, Big Ten Network, 7.30 p.m. 
M. There you go. Uh, Kyle, any, uh, yeah. So, uh, visit the sloopcast.com there. You can find links to our, our YouTube page to the Buckeye scoop YouTube page. Uh, you can find links to our Twitter pages. Uh, Stuart asks who pressures the quarterback more, the linebackers or the D lines in this game. They shouldn't need to send the linebackers too much. That, that would be my take on that. Um, you can find all uh, links to our t-shirt stores. I'm, I'm, unretired the dbu store because i love how much our corners are playing right now now they might be the only they might be the only group in the defensive room who's playing well but gosh darn it our corners are playing really really well so i've unretired the dbu t-shirt you can go buy your own at merch.thesloopcast.com all right kyle that's it do you have anything in kyle's corner Uh, as we're recording here jared freshman defensive tackle mike hall becomes the 17th member to lose their black stripe this year. Oh, and we're not done either. We are not done. Oh, 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 we just got a, another that just came through. Uh, we have, as soon as I'm open up, Jacqueline Johnson, DB, also the 18th member to lose the black stripe as we're recording here. Excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, Make sure to listen you, to Stuart, our for, for all that breaking news stuff in our chat. Thank yes. you. Greatly appreciated, Stuart. I take back all the bad all things right. I said. Right. That, that's it. Said. That's it. I want to mention here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and end the episode. All right. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus area band called Grasslands. Uh, the name of this song is Mr. Creeps. Um, I don't think we've ever played this band on the show before. So this is a this is a first time run for them. So make sure to check out Grasslands. Um, Make sure to stay on for this song. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you guys don't get the song because YouTube is YouTube. But you can click on the link in the show notes and go listen to the song if you want. For the audio only listeners, you, you just stay right where you're at. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Grasslands. Thank you.